While the wall itself contains all manner of astronomical features, stars, galaxies, gas clouds and matter, it was discovered due to its apparent higher than expected concentration of a specific phenomenon, gamma ray bursts. A type of electromagnetic explosion, the clustering of which extends over 10 billion light years, and perhaps even further. Computer models have agreed that a concentration of this many gamma ray bursts across the entire expanse is not likely a coincidence, and so some kind of vast, underlying superstructure may be causing it. But such a structure would not only violate our ideas on cosmic size limits, it would destroy them. We still have a lot to learn, and there is a lot we are probably missing, but one thing's for sure. Contained within the boundaries of this wall lies one of the biggest mysteries in the entire universe. Gamma rays are a form of intense, penetrating electromagnetic radiation, generated by the decay of nuclei in radioactive atoms. Gamma rays have the shortest wavelength of any kind of electromagnetic wave. As a result, Gamma rays are by far the most destructive and powerful waves on the electromagnetic spectrum. These rays are a form of ionising radiation, and so they are biologically hazardous. They can damage bones and internal organs for humans here on Earth, but on a cosmic scale, gamma rays can wipe out entire planets and star systems. A gamma ray burst is a type of extremely energetic explosion, lasting anywhere from a few milliseconds to several hours. These occur very rarely, perhaps a few per galaxy every few million years, but after the initial brief explosion has occurred, a long-lasting afterglow is emitted, and this is what we use as the cooling sign to determine where and when a gamma ray burst has occurred. Most bursts are thought to occur during large supernova explosions, as a massive star explodes at the end of its life, and collapses to become either a neutron star or a black hole. The shockwave of this collapse releases an unbelievable amount of electromagnetic energy, Smaller gamma ray bursts, nicknamed short bursts, are thought to occur when two neutron stars collide. In the few seconds before the collision, the tidal gravitational forces between the two dead stars are so intense that their shells shatter, once again releasing a tremendous amount of energy. Gamma ray bursts are the most powerful explosions in the entire universe. Most release as much energy in a few seconds as our sun will in its entire life, and thus we can detect these foregone cataclysms from billions of light years across space. Gamma ray bursts are linked to a variety of phenomena, but what we didn't expect from them are their apparent links to inexplicably large cosmic structures. Short gamma ray bursts are rarer than large gamma ray bursts, so we could assume that most bursts are the result of supernova explosions from massive stars. So, you would expect patterns of gamma ray bursts to be linked to areas of massive stars which formed in regions with higher amounts of matter than the typical availability within the universe. Massive stars tend to group in dense areas, but when we find these bursts in formations larger than not just galaxies, but entire colonies of galaxies, they leave us scratching our heads. Rings, walls and other gamma ray burst formations are inexplicable with our current understanding, and yet they characterise the largest thing ever discovered, the Great Gamma Ray Burst Wall. The Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall, also known as the Great Gamma Ray Burst Wall, is a structure of 19 gamma ray bursts in an improbably dense clustering, extending over billions of light years. In the original paper noting its discovery, the authors didn't declare an actual name for it, as they were still attempting to determine if their discovery was real or not. The name we know it by today was coined informally, by a teenager from the Philippines after reading a report on the discovery. This name caught on, as scientific outlets and YouTube channels began using the name when referring to this cosmic beast, but the name is not entirely accurate, as while the clustering does indeed expand over the constellations of Hercules and Corona Borealis, the real expanse is much scarier than that. The clustering spreads over no less than 20 constellations, including Hercules and Corona Borealis, Lyra, Bootes, Draco, and extends as far as Gemini. The over-density of gamma ray bursts lie within the second, third, and fourth galactic quadrants of the sky, making this a structure of the Northern Hemisphere, centred around Draco and Hercules. It is difficult to fully appreciate its size, but its longest expanse that we can observe is estimated to be between 9.6 billion light years and 10.5 billion light years. For perspective, the observable universe is 93 billion light years in diameter, and so the structure makes up a massive 10.7% of the diameter of the total known universe. The structure, if it is indeed a structure, spans over 120 degrees of the sky, with redshift values between 1.6 and 2.1. 
This discovery knocked the previous record holder, the huge large quasar group, off the top of the list of the largest cosmic structures. Much like gamma ray burst formations, quasar groups have also been found to characterise strange gargantuan structures in space. The huge large quasar group is a group of no less than 73 quasars, spanning 4 billion light years, and was discovered a year before. While not as many as 73 characterising features, the Great Wall contains 19 gamma ray bursts which are located fairly near to one another on a cosmic scale, vastly exceeding the expected frequency of gamma ray bursts we have observed elsewhere in the universe. While gamma ray bursts are the defining feature of the discovery, the boundaries of the cluster are expected to contain up to 4 billion galaxies, though the question of how many of these galaxies are a product of or influenced by the structure remains up for debate. Regardless, if the wall is a gravitationally bound superstructure, then the mechanisms and motions of interactions between such vast distances in such a short amount of time are unknown. This hypothetical structure is, as of today, the only structure to exceed 10 billion light years, and the universe is just under 14 billion years old. How such a supercluster complex or galaxy filament could become so large in such a short amount of time is a mystery. The Great Wall was discovered just under six years ago, in 2013, by a team of American and Hungarian astronomers as part of the Swift Gamma Ray Burst mission, a space telescope launched by NASA in 2004, designed to detect and map gamma ray bursts. This underpins possibly its most perplexing and intriguing discovery. Using this telescope and a few other sources, the team recorded 283 gamma ray bursts and divided them into groups based on their redshift called subsamples. Gradually, they increased the number of subsamples to search for hidden patterns in their data, and when they used 9 subsamples, they noticed that 19 of the 31 gamma ray bursts in one sample were concentrated in the 2nd, 3rd and 4th galactic quadrants. 14 of these are concentrated over about 45 degrees of the sky, which equates to approximately 10 billion light years based on its distance, which is how scientists were able to determine its estimated length. Given that gamma ray bursts are extremely rare, occurring only at the grace of sufficiently massive, dying stars, this higher than expected distribution over such a vast distance was deemed to be highly improbable, and so the team contemplated the possibility that they had discovered a record-breaking, colossal superstructure. The probability of this clustering was evaluated through the kolmogorov smirnov test, which is a mathematical test of the equality of one-dimensional probability distributions. In simple terms, we can use this test to determine the probability of this clustering of gamma ray bursts, based on the expected amount of bursts we've seen dotted elsewhere around the cosmos. While this test only works for one-dimensional distributions, and hence cannot determine the nature of the full structure, it nonetheless managed to highlight the improbable nature of the clustering. At some points, the likelihood of the positioning of bursts being purely coincidental was less than 0.1%. At its most probable, just 5%. So there was now a considerable line of evidence that this gamma ray burst formation is not simply a coincidence which inspired the superstructure hypothesis. Two further mathematical tests were conducted and both continued to reaffirm the improbable nature of this wall, with the point radius test generating similarly high concentrations of gamma ray bursts only 7 times out of 4000 iterations. If any of that was hard to follow, just know that all the mathematical models applied have highlighted that a concentration of this many gamma ray bursts over a 10 billion light year expanse is extremely unlikely to be a random occurrence in space, and so something must be responsible. As to what it might be, well there have been no shortage of theories. With coincidence unlikely to be the explanation here, there have been a few hypotheses proposed to explain the clustering and as mentioned, a record-breaking intergalactic superstructure is currently the front-runner. These gamma ray bursts may be occurring more frequently within some kind of gravitationally bound structure, the only structure that we know of which exceeds 10 billion light-years. Gamma ray bursts are products of massive dead stars, and groups of massive stars only form in regions where more matter is available for formation. So, a high concentration of gamma ray bursts might suggest an underlying population of massive stars of similar ages, but across an intergalactic expanse. And so perhaps this indicates that there was more matter available within this region of the early universe to form the structure, currently believed to be what is known as a galaxy filament, or complex of superclusters, over billions of years. However, this would have to be an exceptionally large filament, and even if we take an open-minded approach as to how large things in the universe can become, this structure still remains highly anomalous. Approximately 50 times larger, and over 200 times the volume of typical massive intergalactic superclusters, 
once thought to be the largest form of structure in the universe. Superclusters themselves can grow to inconceivable sizes, such as our 520 million light year spanning Lanikia supercluster. Something that dwarfs this 50 times over is nothing short of mind blowing, but doesn't even seem possible. The problem with this hypothesis is the aforementioned theoretical size limit for structures in the universe. It was none other than Isaac Newton who proposed that, when viewed on a large enough scale, all energy and matter within the universe should look the same. There would be variations and dips, but these are small and local, and you would expect to be able to establish a general continuity among the universe's distribution of matter after the Big Bang and cosmic inflation. This principle translates into a theoretical size limit for structures of about 1.2 billion light years. But of course we have found not just one, but a handful of superstructures which seem to challenge this idea. Our redshift analysis has revealed quasar groups and galaxy filaments ranging in sizes from 1.3 billion light years all the way up to 5 billion light years. So, you would expect that this might just mean that the principle of the uniform distribution of matter is incorrect, or our benchmarks are too low. Perhaps matter was not evenly distributed after cosmic inflation, and perhaps some areas simply have more matter available for creation, allowing these unexpectedly huge galaxy filaments to form. But in the case of the Great Wall, even if our principles are incorrect, a structure over 3000 megaparsecs in diameter still seems too large to align with our current observations of formations within the universe. The Great Wall is over double the size of even the next biggest thing. We have only ever discovered one other hypothetical structure to exceed 5 billion light years, let alone one to exceed 10 billion. In the wake of this uncertainty, some have proposed that this clustering may be down to unintended favouritism in our perception. Some argue that we may see this pattern only in this region as we give priority to scanning certain areas of the sky. Space telescopes have regions they cannot survey, for example the direction obstructed by the Earth, the general direction of the Sun due to its harmful radiation, and the zone of avoidance at the heart of the Milky Way. Our galactic core drowns out billions of stars and their extragalactic backdrops from our point of view. Something similar to the Great Wall, or a similar inconsistency in gamma ray bursts, may just be lurking in these unattainable shadows of the night sky. Obviously our surveying techniques are vetted and refined to be as fair and balanced as possible, but it has been noted that the region in which the Great Wall was discovered is surveyed almost twice as often as other areas. But with that said, this doesn't offer an explanation for the clustering by any other means. So perhaps the wall is real, but formed through some as of yet undiscovered mechanism which allows for huge filaments to form. Perhaps as we learn more about other galaxy filaments, such as the Sloan Great Wall and the Boss Great Wall, the Hercules Wall will seem less anomalous. But then, because the Great Wall sticks out as so exceptional from the rest of the largest superstructures, maybe it is just a coincidence or matter of perception after all. The wall contains many billions of galaxies, so you would expect to find gamma ray bursts dotted across such a large expanse. The fact we identify shapes and formations may just be down to our imaginations and human-centric will to find meaning behind what we see in space. Perhaps it is just our point of view, and if the Earth were located in a different galaxy, we wouldn't see such a high concentration. Granted, the clustering is improbable and we don't see it anywhere else in the universe, but maybe that is the point. Maybe we do just exist at an exceptionally unlikely time and in an exceptionally unlikely position to observe a coincidental spike in the number of gamma ray bursts, which ultimately means nothing and will probably never be noted again. If you look deep enough into the universe, through and beyond the trillions of galaxies in our field of view, you would eventually expect to see the improbable. These are our ideas, but they are just that. We are ants, attempting to make sense of the heavens, and so until more research is conducted, one could easily dismiss every idea of speculation. What is for sure though, is that there is a need to explore and investigate superstructures more. We have made amazing progress in merely a few decades, and only when we understand the very biggest things in creation can we truly understand where we fit into this unfathomably large and complex system that is the universe. 10 billion light years is a frighteningly huge distance which is difficult to fully appreciate. It accounts for a notable portion of the visible universe, but beyond the visible universe, nobody knows. If the unobservable universe is truly millions of times more voluminous than what we can observe, then perhaps the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall is a sign that size just keeps on growing, even in the face of all of our supposed theories and anthropocentric ideas on the size limit of structures within the universe. Perhaps, far beyond our segment of the universe, deep into the cosmic web, lay structures we could barely even begin to comprehend. 
As numbers climb, it becomes very easy to lose sight of how massive superstructures are. The scale of the solar system is almost inconceivable to our race, bound to our tiny blue planet, especially when we try and travel across it and explore it. But the solar system is just a microscopic speck in our galaxy. And our galaxy? Well, it's barely even a speck in its galactic superstructure. And the Lanikia supercluster? Well, it would barely even register compared to the vastness of this great wall. But even this titan of creation is nothing compared to the vastness of the total ever-expanding universe. So I'll leave you with some food for thought. Next time you are worrying about something on Earth, be it money, family, school, relationships, work or anything else, just think of the 10 billion light year great wall in space. Think of what exists within it and think of what exists beyond it. And just ask yourself, is this really worth ruining my day over? Is it really that big of a deal?